Seems like a like a like a little bit of a shanty evening in my airport today. Is that to get that feel? No? Maybe not. Maybe I've just been sleeping all day. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us here. Uh, that was my wife Brenda Davy singing. The mother of our children, Naimi Sharanya, and our <laughs> and our little boy Veer Chandra, and uh, she's singing for another one in her belly right now. So please bless bless this soul who has come to Mayapur before this soul has even come in, come out into the world. But uh, we've been, we feel blessed that we've been able to bring all of our babies before they were even born to Mayapur Dam and immerse them in the Ganga. <clears throat> it feels like that's the perfection of our life as parents. <laughs> so please bless this little soul by three Hari Bowls, please. <laughs> So last week I was a guest here, and I took the opportunity to sing a bhajan. And this week I'm not a guest here anymore, because that's the way Mayapur works. Is once, you're, once you just allow the dham to enter into you, you become home here. It's so, this dham is so merciful. So last week we sang a bhajan that was describing uh, the mood of entering into Navadweep, Kabe Gaura Bane Sura Dinitate Haradhe Hakrishna Bole. That when will I roam the banks of the Ganga and Jalangi and Saraswati chanting Hak Haradhe Hakrishna Bole in the forests of Gora? And the last line, the last stanzas of that, of that song by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur reminds us that if we can enter. Gordham in the proper mood, then we'll see no difference between Gordham and Grajdham. We'll see no difference between Navadweep and Vrindavan. And he even says that if I can live my life in this way, then I'll be a servant of Srimati Radharani and I will be a Brajabasi. So those of you that are living here, you actually get double benefit because you're not just Mayapuris, but you're Brajabasis as well. So today we thought we would sing a bhajan, also by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, which uh, describes all of the things that Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur finds that are, that are inspiring his meditation, inspiring his bhajan, inspiring that mood of Vrindavan within the heart. As Mahaprabhu says, more man Vrindavan, my mind, my heart is Vrindavan. The logic is that Krishna never leaves Vrindavan, right? Do we believe that Krishna never leaves Vrindavan? Yes. yes. We hear that often. And we also hear that Krishna is in our hearts. Is Krishna in our hearts? Yes. Do you believe that? Yes. Trying to believe it, right? So if Krishna never leaves Vrindavan and Krishna is in our hearts, then what does that make our heart? Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. So if we don't want Krishna to leave our hearts, then we pray to the Lord. So we pray to develop the garden of our heart like Vrindavan. And so in this song called Radha Kunda Tata Kunja Kutira, in this song, uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is explaining some beautiful meditations on how to uh, awaken and develop love for Vrindavan within our hearts. And not only will we hear this bhajan, we may not know the words, this may be an unfamiliar bhajan, I'm kind of pulling out bhajans from a wonderful app here called Gaudiya Kirtan. Arivo. <laughs> developed by Madhukar Prabhu right here. Arivo. Arivo. This is a little plug-in here. This app is like the savior of the cyber world, of the iPhone world or the cell phone world. It 
They've had hundreds and hundreds of bhajans, uh, Bengali, Hindi, Sanskrit prayers. It has the translations written very wonderfully, and it has the word for word as well, so you can meditate on the word for words. And I think this for Purnim, they're adding 300 more melodies, uh, 300 more songs to this app called Gurya Kirtan. And not only that, but they're also offering recordings of, uh, of the bhajan. So you can listen to the recordings and learn how to sing them yourself. So it's so sweet. So not only will we sing this bhajan, and not only will we maybe like, describe what's happening in this bhajan, but um, in puja, there are mudras. I know I'm making a long introduction, I, please forgive me, but this is also kirtan. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll do, we'll, mud, in puja, we do mudras. And the mudras, they, they invoke a consciousness, they invoke a feeling through hand gestures. So in puja, in dance, we do mudras. So Ganga Devi, my sister, is going to lead us in some mudras. Will you all agree to do the mudras with us, please? Can I get a Hari Bol? Okay. <laughs> The words are Radha Kunda Tata, Radha Kunda Tata, please sing, Radha Kunda Tata, on the banks of Radha Kunda, like where Tatashta Shakti Tata means the banks, Radha Kunda Tata, Radha Kunda Tata, Kunja Kutira, Kunja Kutira, Kunja Kunjas are the forest gardens, of Vrindavan and imagine a small cottage on the banks of Radha Kund filled with vines and creepers along that. So please, uh, as, we, as we chant this bhajan, we'll sing that refrain and please respond and also everybody please put your hands out. Put your hands out. Okay, let's start with that Radha Kund the Tata. Kunja Kutira Radha Kunda Tata Kunja Kutira Radha Kunda Tata attracted by those lotus flowers and we're in a small cottage on the banks of Radha Kund, very simple, maybe surrounded by little Govardhan Shilas around, 
We have a Tulsi outside. And there's beautiful creepers, vines, maybe malati flowers, jasmine flowers that are climbing our cottage. Feel this cottage in your mind's eye as we sing. And we're on, we're right at the foothills of Govardhan Hill. Govardhan Parvata Govardhan Parvata Together. Govardhan Parvata Don't forget to do the mudras. Govardhan Parvata where the gopis would pick flowers for Radha and Krishna. Pick flowers in your mind's eye to offer Radha and Krishna. And Manasa Ganga, the Ganga river that was created from the mind of Krishna. Kalinda Nandini, the Yamuna river is flowing. Vipula Taranga, and the waves of the Yamuna are like music to the ears, the flowing streams that enter into the ears and enter into the heart.
We visit Kofu, the home of Nanda Baba and Yashoda Maya. And Gira Samira. Where schooling breezes blow from the Yamuna River. And we meditate on each and every tree and creeper and leaf and flower of Vrindavan Dham. Because at the root of these trees are Chintamani stones. And each one of the branches and leaves of this tree can fulfill every single one of our desires. Horns. 
bugle horn. Blow your bugle horn. The footprints in the sand, the footprints of Krishna, the footprints of the cows. And when we see those clouds in the sky, the dark clouds like Panasham, we remember Krishna. In the springtime, it's springtime. The conch shell and the karakal are playing. Can you do a conch shell? Everyone, can you do this mudra for the conch shell? Everyone, blow your conch shell. Oh, that's a 
Is that okay? Yeah. So I'll help you picture the scene and then I'll show you how we want to meditate during the kirtan. So the first thing I would like you to do is think of your favorite deities in the whole world. And specifically if, if you've been worshipping these deities then these should be the deities you're thinking of. The deities you're most attached to. Maybe it's here, maybe Vrindavan, your temple, your home. And imagine you've been worshipping these deities for eight years. And this worship is your life and soul. It's everything to you. And one day you find out these are not your deities. They belong to someone else and they were loaned and you never knew that. And the owner of the deities has now come to take them away. This actually happened to us in Mauritius. The deities from one temple went to another temple. They were only supposed to be there for a year or two and they ended up six years. And then we had to take them back and they wouldn't let them go. And we had a big fight. We finally got them. It was a very intense scene. So imagine your deities, this is inconceivable, I think it only has happened once or twice. Imagine your deities are being taken away, like right now, and you can't do anything. And you're begging the people, don't take them away, but they're being taken away. Okay. I just, just how does that feel? Just meditate on how that feels. The pain you're feeling. Okay, so now let's go to Vrindavan when Krishna is eight years old and he informs everyone he has some business in Mathura and he'll come back the next day or the day after or maybe a week maybe ten days, maybe two weeks maybe three weeks, he'll come back and you're there and you've grown up with Krishna and Krishna is more dear to you than your own life you could tolerate dying, but you can't tolerate being separated from Krishna because that's all you know. He's the object of your love for those eight years. You love him intensely more than anything, even your own children, your own mother, your own father. And now Krishna's going. So, when we do this kirtan, I want you to meditate on Krishna's going and I want to give you a vision. It's the afternoon, the sun is setting, 
and the chariot is driving off into the sunset and it's getting smaller and smaller and the dust from the horses is kicking up behind the chariot and you see Krishna and Balaram going further and further away and you can't tolerate them leaving and you don't know when they're coming back so in this kirtan I, want, I would like you to meditate on that scene and then meditate on chanting so purely with so much desire to bring Krishna back that we're trying to chant to get him to turn his chariot around and if we chant, maybe if we chant purely enough he'll turn the chariot around Can we do that? We can try. So, I have a melody that will help you. And this is the melody that goes with the scene when we make the movie. If we ever make the movie. But if we ever made a movie of Krishna leaving Vrindavan, which I would love to do, although I don't know how to make movies. I think about this a lot. If we ever made a movie of Krishna leaving Vrindavan, this would be the song, this would be the melody. And so, the Maha Mantra means whatever it means to you. That's what it means. There's not just one meaning. But what the meaning you give it is what it means. For example, 1976, I think, here in Mayapur, they had a kirtan competition. So they brought in devotees and professionals. And they had like a battle of the bands, you know. Mayapur Idol kind of thing. You know, who's the best kirtan here? So <clears throat> they brought in professional groups and one professional group was singing, you know, Bengali style, very showy, long, like that, like that, you may have heard. And so Prabhupada heard that, they were chanting the Maha Mantra, he heard that, and then he turned to the devotees, he was in his room, he said, they're not chanting Hare Krishna. And of course, that's what everybody heard. They heard the Maha Mantra, and he said, they're not chanting Hare Krishna, they're chanting money, money, money. Because they were professionals. If they won the competition, they'd get a lot of work. So they could do kirtan, make more money. So, the point Prabhupada was making is that What's in your mantra is what it means. It's not absolute that it means, Krishna, please engage me. If you're thinking money, 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 that's what it means. So in this meditation, Krishna, please come back. That's what this mantra means. So that's the meditation. And this is the melody. We'll figure it out. There's some changes in it in the end. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare. Krishna, 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 Krishna,
Thank you. 
I think he's thinking about turning the chariot around. Because Krishna reciprocates with the love of his devotees. So wherever that love is, that's where he goes. So if we can manifest a little more love, maybe he'll turn the chariot around. What do you think? Can we try? Everyone together. Let's turn the chariot around. Hare Krishna.
will be here. So if you want him to come back, he'll come back. And if you want him to go away, unfortunately, he'll go away. So if you chant like you mean it, Krishna will come. If you chant like you don't mean it, he'll stay away. Whatever you want, he'll reciprocate. Now actually, I turned this around, this story around, because the reality is we're in the chariot and Krishna's asking us to come back and we leave. So Krishna doesn't leave us, we leave him. So in a sense, chanting is a prayer to ourselves. Krishna, please don't let me leave you ever again. So we're actually in the chariot, driving away. And the Maha Mantra turns the chariot around, so we come back to Krishna. you may have been there and not realized it and now you're in another body can't remember but basically we did kirtan all day sometimes all night also and we only had like one melody or maybe two or three but the main melody that Prabhupada brought Hare Krishna Hare Krishna that's what this movement was built on. Did you know that? That melody. That's the kirtan that spread Krishna consciousness around the world. That melody. And that melody is really rarely chanted. And it's very simple. And sometimes it's so simple that we think it's like there's no rasa in it. But actually there is. So I thought we would chant it and turn the rasa out of it. What we could call Prabhupada's melody. What do you think? Worth a try? Okay. So, um, I let you rest in the last year, John, so if you want to dance now, now that you're resting, it's okay. And let me just give you a, a picture of what the movement was like. In 1969, or of course Prabhupada came in 65, but when I first came, well actually I first saw the movie, maybe 1968. 67 or 68. In those days, at least in America, there were no shopping malls. Shopping was downtown. The downtowns. Every city had a downtown, and downtown was where everybody did everything. All the businesses, all the shopping it was downtown. So that's where devotees went. They went downtown. Um, about got there about 12 o'clock and chanted till about 6 o'clock and then on Friday night they went back out about 8 o'clock till around midnight Saturday night same thing and then Sunday stayed back and this was going on in major cities all over the world and people were becoming devotees by seeing these Hari Namprams like they were everywhere in all the major cities of the world there were devotees chanting and this is the melody they were chanting. <laughs> so, you can meditate on that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And as most of you know, the um, Shama Sundar Prabhu met George Harrison. And George Harrison was already chanting Hare Krishna. And he liked the devotees so much, he said, why don't we make a record? Okay. And that record, I think it was number 10 in London and in other states, other countries, number one. Hare Krishna.
And I was in the Calcutta airport for 24 hours, and I didn't know where I was going during those 24 hours. There was a possibility, maybe I wouldn't get into India, and maybe I would not be able to come to my airport. So I was thinking about all the possible scenarios that could happen, and then I thought, why should I think about the bad? I should just think about the good. So I began meditating on my airport on the devotees, the deities, 
and be here tonight to do the kirtan. And so I thought, why should I meditate on what I don't want? Or what I'm afraid will happen, I should meditate. So it's actually quite special for me to be here because I wasn't actually sure I was going to be able to come here. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.